you know, like what is it, Article One Sixty Nine Dot Three Forty One? HIPAA shall not be a checklist. <laughs> You're listening to the Help Me With HIPAA podcast, where HIPAA and humor collide to make learning fun. Your delightful hosts are Donna Grindle and David Sims. Relax, HIPAA help is on the way. This is Amy Moikich from Atlanta Gynecology and Obstetrics in Lilburn, Georgia, and you are listening to the Help Me With HIPAA podcast. Thank you for that intro. I'm David Sims of HIPAA for MSPs and Security First IT, and joining me is Donna Grindle of Carton. <laughs> Good morning, Donna. One day, one day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, for those of you who don't know, <laughs> our discussion before the recording started <laughs> was about somebody who does not think security should be first. <laughs> 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 Thus, my emphasis on the word first. first. <laughs> they think security is just going to go away. <laughs> yeah. It's, so, funny, funny side story. Um, I was talking to somebody the other day. And, uh, and I said, well, have you listened to our podcast? And she goes, yeah, actually I did listen to one episode and I'm like, cool. Which one was it? And she says, the one where you were ranting the entire time about business associates. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, well, uh, they're not all like that. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I'm thinking she was going, wow. I don't know that I want to listen to him rant every episode. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, yeah, you picked a, a good one to start with. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's a real good one right there. <laughs> awesome. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, it's, it's uh, you know, we we appreciate that people have been sharing the word about Help Me With HIPAA. Mm-hmm. We, we can see that more people are listening and we need more. Yes. You know, right now we're just like a little niche podcast. But we need to grow. So take 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 a moment right now. Hit pause. Yeah. Donna and wants to take her diapers off and be a big girl. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> Let's just, on with the show, buddy. All right. So today <laughs> we're gonna be talking about HIPAA being so ambiguous. Yeah. Yeah, we get emails about that. <laughs> yep. So it doesn't matter if it's doctors and nurses, lawyers, managers, supervisors, compliance officers, lions, tigers, and bears. (laughs) They all say, God, it's so ambiguous and and we just don't understand it. And it's just a bunch of best practices. Uh, Well, you know, honestly, I'm glad it's that way. I think it's really flexible and it's reasonable, which I think is the way we should look at it, not ambiguous. Yes, yeah, so we're going to talk about that and explain why y- you can treat it as flexible and reasonable and appropriate. Yes. Not ambiguous. But first, there's some stuff we got to do, right? Yeah. We got to talk about the HIPAA bootcamp.com. <laughs> Yep, so yeah. the spring session of the HIPAA Boot Camp for 2020. Hmm. Yeah, we got folks signing up from uh, the West Coast even and up the seaboard and here locally. And and so... You know what's going to happen? A- We're going to have the the East Coast session have a bunch of West Coast people in it, and then the West Coast session is going to have a bunch of East Coast people in it. <laughs> <laughs> It's all we'll, about that. You're right. Yeah, we'll figure it out. We'll be like, oh, you have to do it further away from people to get them to come. Now yeah. I got it. <laughs> well, you know, we we do uh, appreciate everybody that comes to the boot camp because they're signing themselves up for three days of HIPAA intensity. Yeah. Absolutely. And yes, you may come and wonder, how could anybody talk about HIPAA for three days? We have had... Uh, you know, one of one of our attendees did say, I have no idea why I'm going to this. How could you talk about HIPAA for three days? Told somebody that on her way to day one and sends them a, a message on day three when they say, how bad was it? She's like, it was actually fun. It was great. <laughs> <laughs> we could do a couple more days. <laughs> yeah, this is pretty awesome. Yeah. Uh, I got so, a kick out of that story, but 
We should plan a HIPAA boot camp cruise next year. You know, you keep bringing that up. <laughs> I'm hoping it'll stick eventually. <laughs> All right. Well, you're in charge of it, David. <laughs> All righty. Every detail, the planning, the you know, all that stuff. If you're in charge, I'm in. And me be at the Bass Pro Shop. We'll pick out a boat. All right. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> so you can go to thehippabootcamp.com for more information and to register for the spring session here in Tucker, Georgia. March 24th, 25th. 26 we got all of our stuff all of our ducks in a row uh, filing all our paperwork to get our ceu approval with the compliance certification board again so you know we, we don't do it with all of them but if you got the paperwork for one of them approving it it usually goes through everywhere else so go there give us a call or uh, send us an email if you have any questions concerning the boot camp Looking forward to seeing you there. All righty. Good and deal. We need to thank our donors. Yeah. Now <laughs> yeah, that we're, that we're managing blood. it properly. <laughs> it's amazing. We I have like, donors. I thank feel like you. We should, I feel like we should give them like a sticker and a cookie. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of cookie? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I just feel like they're donating blood or something. So, I know, you know. Right. Yeah. You know, those little, uh, it's a little band-aid for the pain. But uh, thanks for your support. And if you would like to donate to the cause, you can do that at helpmewithhippa.com. Look for the green donate button. Green. I wonder why David came up with that color when he put it on. <laughs> well, as my wife would always say, is it donate or donate? <laughs> <laughs> the funny thing was... Uh, I'll tell this story. Hopefully, she won't hear it. But her sister <laughs> was named Dawn, and she was she would always be like, "Hey, you want that? Can I have it?" And so we would call it Donate. <laughs> <laughs> donate. Yeah. Get it. Put on pump. There you go. Anyhow, that'll work. Yep. So, uh, you ready to dive into some uh, updated news and all kind of yeah. other stuff? Yeah, we got. We'll do some news, and then uh, our topic of the day. Uh, in just a second. Absolutely. But first, a word from our sponsors. The number of medical practices that think they're HIPAA compliant is pretty staggering. Effective privacy and security are an ongoing process, not a checklist. And that's why at Cardin, they don't just assess your situation and leave you with a report, but they work with you all along the way. Call Cardin today at 678 678- 292-5001 or visit them on the web at cardinhq.com. Aren't your patients worth it? Are you frustrated with your current IT provider? Are you sure you're getting the security and protection you need? Are you putting your patients and your practice at risk? If you're in the Charlotte, North Carolina area, give Security First IT a call to learn more about how they can protect your patients, your practice, and your bottom line. Find them online at securityfirstit.com or call 980-288-5100. And we're back. Thank you, sponsors. <laughs> <laughs> if it were not for you, we would not be here, sponsors. <laughs> sponsors and donors. That's how we do it. I know. So, uh, okay, let's talk about some updates in the news because, as uh, you and I know, we spend every single morning – Looking at the news, and every single evening, <laughs> looking at the news. Yeah, and wearing each other out. Ding, 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 ding. Did yeah. you see this one? Yeah, look at this, look at this, look at this. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, well, the yeah. funny thing is we never we never bring any context to our messaging. It's just no. the link. <laughs> and, and, and then a response, and then a link, and then a response. So this one, we both were like, you know, come on, man. <laughs> so, and, and the reason we're sharing this is we, I'm going to try to all these news articles that I don't really want to make another episode about it, but the news articles are important. So I'm going to try to include some of those, uh, if not every time, often, just that we'll hit what it is that we're watching some news stories and not dig into it too deep unless we go on a rant. So, you know. 
So the first one, I titled it, Wake Up, I Have Something to Tell You. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, that uh, – uh, you want to try to explain wake on land? Uh, basically, the computers can – you know, they go to sleep or can go to sleep. Or, and, uh, you know, typically you have to walk up to it and you know, hit a button on the keyboard or something like that to, to wake it up. However – you can set computers up to do what's called wake on LAN, which is, you know, over your network. So the computer basically gets a little, you know, something, something on the network shakes it and says, hey, get up. I got something to tell you. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so, so what happens is that little uh, LAN signal shakes the computer and says, wake up, got something to tell you. And the computer says, okay, cool. I'll wake up. And, mm-hmm. uh, and it, it just becomes, you know, fully functional, normal wake, waking computer. Now that is not not necessarily set on by default, no. But it is something that many network management teams will use. And um, uh, here's the thing: uh, this uh, Ryuk ransomware, which really was the first one that started doing the you know big money with the businesses and being super successful, that has you know was the signal that the tide was turning with this stuff it now can there's somebody that has modified it to a new version that will wake up the computers mm-hmm. and say wake up i got something to tell you here's some ransomware boom yeah. so even, <laughs> even if before the ransomware wouldn't catch that computer now it will yeah so, so i know that's kind of been a security thing people have tried where mm-hmm. they go, Hey, I'll put my computers to sleep in the evening or I set them to go to sleep. And that, mm-hmm. and that's another layer of security. And, you know, to some degree it, do, it does some things, mm-hmm. but they're getting around that now. Yeah. So make sure you check with your IT folks and that they don't use wake on land or if they do, they're aware of this problem. And then the next one is, is, I dubbed it, listen up, everybody, we have something to tell you. (laughs) Because we mentioned in our Ransomware Warnings Everywhere episode uh, that just came out a couple weeks ago that there's some that were saying, hey, if you don't pay us, we're going to publish your information on our own little wall of shame. And, you know, that was bad enough. And then if you don't pay us... We're going to release your data, and we talked about that then. Well, here's the thing. It's definitely happening now, number one, and at least one healthcare case, it's gotten worse. So first of all, let's talk about how bad it is on what is happening. Southwire is a company here. As always, there's a big story. It's going to be in my backyard. (laughs) And uh, it's, uh, it's on the other side of Atlanta, Carrollton. But uh, they were hit by the May's ransomware attackers, and they were hit in December, which is when all of this started happening, and they were going to publish your name and all this. So they demanded $6 million. Mm. Right, because they stole all this data. So $6 million, that, number one, points out just how expensive they are making these ransoms. But then not only are they doing that, they're backing it up by saying we're going to publish it, And Southwire says, we ain't paying. And so when they refuse to pay, they also (laughs) are suing them in court. (laughs) I just, I don't know, they, they, I don't, I didn't, it's too detailed of a discussion. But anyway, they have an Irish court that uh, they are suing them. But when all of that happened, uh, they were like, okay, you're not paying. And they published 14 gig of Southwire's data in a Russian hacker form. Hmm. Wow. I wonder if the hackers are using like the OCR payment scale. I know, right? <laughs> it's, just, it's like 50000 per occurrence from a uh, day. Yeah. yeah. You're going to pay uh, $6 million. <laughs> there you go. I, you know, I don't know where they come up with it. <laughs> but they claim that that's just the first bit of the data they stole. They've stolen and they will continue to release it. And, you know, Southwire... Yeah, I, I, I don't know how that's going to work out. I think it's very interesting, but yeah. it doesn't mean the data is not going to be released, which is what really matters, right? Yeah. I mean, and maybe, so, maybe they're Lee Major fans. Oh, no. <laughs> 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 uh, 
Uh, okay. Some of you are like, I don't know what he's talking about. <laughs> yeah. Oh, there you go. All right. So <laughs> <laughs> leaving that, it takes us to, so clearly that's what's happening. It's happening in big numbers and, and in very serious ways. And then we learn, okay, if that's not bad enough, they're also uh, uh, taking it a step further because uh, the Center for Facial Restoration in South Florida mm-hmm. uh, was hit in November. Very similar situation, you know, where you don't pay, we're going to release your data. And and the letter from the doctor, you know, it, it was just it's it's another case of you should let you should let the guy that said he doesn't care read that letter. Yeah. You yeah. know. Because yeah, this, that's that's what we're talking about. It's yeah, not yeah. yeah, but this is the same guy who also said that, you know, Trump was gonna make HIPAA go away. So I, I don't know that, that there's any help with this guy. I know, right. <laughs> but anyway, that that's a whole nother story that David and I had earlier. He had another HIPAA Schmippa case. So it's still happening today. <laughs> For those of you who think, oh, I've seen that quote, everybody in healthcare understands it. They they follow HIPAA. And I'm like, no, they don't. Mm-mm. Okay. So <laughs> anyway, so the Center for Facial Restoration, they get hit in November. They're told the same thing. If you don't pay, we're going to uh, publish your data. And so they then had to release public notice that, hey, we, we're having trouble even getting the list of all of the affected patients because we can't get to our data. So we're going to have to let you know that this has happened. And so when they make the public release, a lot of patients, we're not talking one or two, we're talking double digit numbers, apparently contacted the office to let them know that the attackers have been calling them and demanding payment directly from the patients. (laughs) Wow. Yeah. So this is getting worse. And well, you know, you can't say that my information wasn't breached if you're getting contacted by them. I know, right? <laughs> and and so there's going to be some some people if if this starts happening, this this is not going to be good for all of those folks that have maybe not reported when things have happened even though it, you know, they probably should have they made the business decision not to that they felt like it was okay. Anyway, mm. well, I can't stress it enough. I, I you got to tighten up shit because if they get in, it's all over today. You know, used to, okay, just try not to let them in, and then when they get in, you know, be prepared. And uh, you know, today they they've made it where, you know, first it was well, we'll we'll wipe out your backups and we'll encrypt your backups and all of that. And then we started putting the backups offline where they couldn't get to them. And now look what they're doing. So they're going to continue. And, uh, it, it's, uh, the tools available to them. So <laughs> David sent me this one. Uh, I love the title WTF AFS. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. This is one. I'm just like, I'm done. <laughs> yeah. I, I, David, it was one of those where he sends me the message and it's, Windows encryption could spawn nasty new ransomware. <laughs> and I just said, uh, I quit. I just sent it back today. I quit once I read it. But anyway, it's down in the guts. I, I don't know. How do you explain that one? Uh, yeah, they can go read it. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's complicated techie stuff, but it just means that the stuff that's there to supposedly protect us is can also be used to spread ransomware. Yeah, and uh, that that's not good. And then you saw that you got two others that we added to the the list of things your for your reading pleasure if you want it. So David had the two other ones with the uh, uh, rant. Yeah. yeah, hit them, hit them. Yeah, well, one is the they found out in I guess some study did it was done in, in Q four of last year, and they found out that ransomware payments have doubled. And uh, and downtime has also went up a lot. So apparently ransomware is not just uh, increasingly prevalent, but it's also getting more and more expensive. More expensive in both what we're they're charging you if you're going to pay them and how long it takes to recover either way. Yep. And so um, and it doesn't say that the 
uh, amount of the payments doubled. It says that the payments doubled, which means I would expect that more people are also paying the mm-hmm. ransom as exactly. well. Uh, and then lastly, uh, I was listening to a podcast yesterday, Malicious Life, and uh, pretty cool stuff there. They brought he even up used his uh, Malicious Life, his, his little... <laughs> I know how you like that. Yeah. <laughs> Rand Levy. <laughs> we'll shout out to him on this episode. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Um, so anyway, he's talking about this uh, malware. I had, hadn't heard of it before, but it was it's called the Triton Triton malware. And uh, so I Googled a little bit and it kind of first popped up in 2017 and then kind of went away. And then 2019 started to get a lot more, a lot more press, but it's actually the world's most murderous malware. Yes. It will kill you. <laughs> Not your computer. Yeah. You. So this particular malware is actually aimed at industrial cons- control systems. They're, safety side of things and so you know you imagine you're working in some type of an industry and you've got all these high pressure pipes with filled with gases and all this other stuff and there's safety systems there to make sure that you know the pressure's correct and all this stuff and you know cuts power to it if there's things that are outside of the the normal parameters well this malware attacks those safety systems so that it, they don't see the danger coming, uh, which could cause these industrial plants to have um, explosions and everything else, which will kill people. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and it is designed for that effect to kill people. Well, because there's other malware that actually causes these things to overheat. And exactly. Pressure, so. Yeah. So for people who think that, well, malware is just going to get my, you know, my pictures or my music or some data, whatever. No, this stuff can literally kill people. Yeah, so you're either part of the solution or you're part of the problem today. And that's, I mean, that's just the way I look at it now because every little thing matters and everything could be used uh, in some attacks. So, yeah. The point is there's so much going on. There's so much news and that, you know, some people are even calling this, you know, ransomware 2.0 is where we are. I Mm -hmm. think they're probably right, and it's not just ransomware 2.0, but now that they've learned that they make good money doing these kinds of things, so even the Triton thing, okay, we've taken over, and we're fixing to jack up all your systems unless you pay us a bunch of money. Mm -hmm. So there you go. Anyways. There's our news stories for today, and <laughs> hopefully that's uh, made you real excited about listening to anything else we got to say. Uh, but yeah, so um, you know, which brings us into HIPAA. So yeah. ambiguous or not, <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, these are the things we're trying to protect people from. It's yeah. all the other stuff that will kill you because as we we've mentioned this before in a past podcast, but you start getting into the medical IoT devices and all that. Imagine the effects those things could have on people. Right. So, but anyway, that's the lack of availability or the loss of control or the, I can't trust the integrity of what the device is going to do. I mean, there's a lot of reasons that these things matter. So then HIPAA is supposed to help us. And then we said before, you know, that, that HIPAA is the minimum. HIPAA is the floor. Mm Mm-hmm. You know, we've talked about that. Get off the floor. <laughs> <laughs> so, but we do get, we see, we read it in articles. We get emails with people trying to sell us stuff, telling us how ambiguous it is, and we can learn from their checklist. <laughs> and <laughs> I just got what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> and sometimes uh. I just, I, I reach my limit and i have to reply to them here re- listen to this episode or this one and yeah, then, don't tell me you can teach me about hippo when you can't spell it right yeah and <laughs> and don't tell me how your information would be helpful on my <laughs> okay so uh, i mean there are things that are helpful and we're open to people giving us helpful information but a basic hippo checklist idea Anyways, um, <laughs> that's, 
It's like the spray and pray approach. It's just with business. Yeah. All right. So, uh, but yeah, first of all, you know, we we see this, uh, and people tell us this. You know, oh, it's up for debate, and it's it's just you know all this kind of crap. So first I said, let me let me get the definitions of ambiguous, which then made me laugh because the definition of ambiguous is indeed ambiguous. <laughs> and that's funny. It's a it's a loop. You're in a in a in an in infinite loop there. So the there's two definitions on, you know, Merriam Webster. I'm a, I always go right to sources. The definition number one said uh, doubtful or uncertain, especially from obscurity or indistinctness, inexplicable. Mm-hmm. Okay. And then the second was capable of being understood in two or more possible senses or ways. Okay. Okay. So, <laughs> so like every conversation I've had with my wife. <laughs> <laughs> and here, poor Lori gets in it again. I know. She don't listen, so I can say it. <laughs> you get away with stuff. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it is a good thing. So, uh, that she doesn't. Anyway. You know, it, when you if you just hear parts of HIPAA, then I could see why you know uh, you might say that it's. Uh, I, I don't know that you would say it's obscure, but being understood in two or more possible senses or ways, that can happen. But as you mentioned, in a basic conversation, that can happen. Mm-hmm. And, <laughs> There's what you say and what I hear. <laughs> they exactly. are often not the same. <laughs> You know, or I'm asking for this, and you, when you hear that, you think it's something else, and we're not, you know, on the same page. Mm -hmm. Which is why HIPAA has a glossary and requires, as part of the elements, that you should have one to make sure everybody's on using the same terms for things. You know, the cybersecurity framework, everything says, here are the terms we're going to agree on. So, yeah, and the privacy rule... (laughs) Yeah, but so much about the privacy rule is about individuals and individual situations. So, yes, that can become complicated because people. uh, (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) No said. (laughs) Yeah. So, you know, when you say that there's too much ambiguity in in HIPAA, I'll, I'll never, you know, the thing is, is that, you know, that, to me, is like a negative approach, uh, more of a, you know, a reason I don't have to do things or spend time understanding things. I say, I think that it's it's your, you know, it's it's flexibility that we need. You know, mm-hmm. it, it's almost always when they're saying that they're they're missing the boat when it's the built-in flexibility. You know, so you have one big law that covers. A third of the U.S. economy. Yeah. And they're all differences, different sizes and shapes and, you know, financial institutions. You don't have financial institutions that's like, you know, six people and four computers. Right. That are truly running the money and, and storing the important data. So it's not the same. And it has to be. Broad. I don't think people understand just how big they understand their area of healthcare, but healthcare is so huge. Mm-hmm. You know, just the departments in a hospital are way more complicated than most people would uh, ever believe. And then if you've worked in one area of healthcare and not others, there are sometimes assumptions. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and we know about assume. But the bottom line is, whether you're looking at privacy and security, any parts of HIPAA, all you have to do is answer two questions about how you read it and how you're addressing it, you know, what what your interpretation is. So when you read it, it doesn't matter what somebody else thinks, it's what you think, and can you answer these two questions about the way you are addressing that in your business? Fair enough? Fair enough. So question number one, is this adequately protecting my patient from a violation of their privacy rights? First one, you know, if if I'm doing this, do I think it's enough to protect my patient's privacy from being violated? If, If I believe 
that whatever I've chosen to do or how I've chosen to implement this, I feel like I could tell my patients I'm doing enough, then there you go. That's number one. And number two, is this a reasonable and appropriate safeguard for protecting that privacy and security of their information when I take into account the size and complexity of this operation? Phew. What? <laughs> <laughs> Look, well, I, can, I completely agree with it, but there's, I think there's a big difference when mm. you ask the person that is, um, that is on the hot seat, this question yeah, versus the person that's on the outside, this question, because it, when I ask those two questions, I get a very different response than if I were to ask you the same question about that practice, because <laughs> they're going to be like, yeah, I'm doing exactly what's reasonable and appropriate. And you're going to be like, no, <laughs> well, but I don't the, think so. <laughs> but the whole thing is, is that it's still their business decision. And oh, just yeah, like you and I both talked about, you know, the HIPAA schmipa guy, it, you just walk away. You <laughs> yes. don't see things the same way. And, you know, and that's kind of like people who don't wear a seatbelt. You know, the law says in every state now, I think, you have to wear a seatbelt. And then I look over people not wearing a seatbelt. It gives me the heebie-jeebies. <laughs> well, I've had people tell me that HIPAA is not reasonable and appropriate. <laughs> yeah. So. Well, how? It's totally <laughs> flexible. Yeah. Uh, because it holds them accountable. That's why. Exactly. It, it says you can't ignore this stuff, and that's the bottom line. All it's saying is you can't ignore this stuff. You have to make a business decision about how you're going to address it. And just like any other business decision, I can choose not to follow the law when it comes to my accounting. Mm -hmm. And if anything goes wrong, it will impact me, my business, my employees, whatever, but I'm taking that risk and right. saying, you know, what I do with my money is more important than following the law or worrying about these other folks. Fine. Do it. If you get caught, own it. Don't just, you know, run to the Caymans. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. So, you know, it's everybody's looking for this to be a checklist. Yeah. And I think that's, you know, like, what is it? Article 169.341. HIPAA shall not be a checklist. <laughs> uh, I like it. We should add that. <laughs> yeah. You know, it, it it's, you know, we've, we've said that a few times, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think so. You know, checklist are elements of your program. They are not your program. Fair enough. Mm -hmm. So, if you see someone that says, here, get your free checklist, and this will tell you how to run your HIPAA program. <laughs> uh. <laughs> yeah, I, I remember it's been a while back, but somebody was asking about HIPAA, whatever, and I remember sending them, you know, five or six different podcasts and, you know, a bunch of different other documentation websites, and they were like, dude, is there not just a checklist? <laughs> Like, no, no, it doesn't, it does not work that way. <laughs> mm -hmm. First, listen to the one that says HIPAA is not a checklist. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Let's start All there. Right. Yeah. We should create a package for you want to understand HIPAA, listen in this order. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. That'll be yeah. the next. Hey, Krista, can you get on that for us? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, we did. Didn't we have a listener that wanted to help? Yeah. 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 There I we go. Hook them up with Krista. I'm going to, I'm going to do that. Now let Krista do it. She ain't got nothing else to do. <laughs> Love you, Chris. Yeah. Cray yeah. cray. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to get a call when she hears this one. <laughs> or you will. Yeah. All right. So that flexibility of approach, you know, is really and truly important. And that's what I think people call, you know, it, they say it's ambiguous. And, uh, uh, I think it's it's that they don't want to take the time to apply it to each individual environment. They're looking for everybody to be the same, and I trust trust me. I mean, no two practice. You can go to two different pediatric practices in the same area with the same volume of same, and they will not be the same. You know, 
the way they work and the things that are there and the tool, nothing will be the same. The decisions will need to be variables. Some of them, you know, will be similar. You know, the very, very basic stuff, we'll, we'll put out an MPP. Okay. That might be the same. <laughs> yeah. But the important thing is everybody's worrying about this HIPAA compliance, HIPAA compliance. And we have a saying, uh, thanks to, you know, I, th- I think that uh, our, our friend, <laughs> do we give him credit? Did he come up with it? What are we saying? <laughs> compliance is not security and security is not compliance. This is true. Yeah. So, uh, Ray. <laughs> Ray. <laughs> Right. <laughs> he came over with that? Yeah. Wow. Sure. <laughs> All right. But anyway, shout out to Ray. But it 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 is true if all you're worried about is I need this checklist so that I can do my HIPAA compliance. And, you know, we're we're getting those, you know, we get inquiries every week of somebody that says, Can you certify my HIPAA compliance? Uh can you audit our HIPAA compliance and give us a, you know, a certificate. Can you make sure we're HIPAA compliant? (sighs) There's some education. (laughs) I can make sure this specific instance in time (laughs) that Mm -hmm. you might be HIPAA compliant. Yeah. It's a point (laughs) of time. That's why there's no checklist, you know, and, and that's the part. It's like I get to make decisions about how to make this work in my environment and then I document my decisions. And if I decide I'm not going to do it, I should at least write that down to protect my staff, you know, because it's it's my decision, my business, fine. But protect your staff, you know, from having somebody, if, if you go down in flames and they go to work somewhere else, are they going to be, it's going to be assumed that they refuse to do it, you know, and it was their direction. So, you know, give them some help. But the bottom line is everybody wants a to-do list. Yeah. I, we give them one and then they freak out. There's too many things on my to-do list. <laughs> I'll give you a not to-do list. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, when we do our assessment, we have our kickoff meeting. We say, okay, now here's all the things that we're going to be looking for. We need to do this data collection first. You know, we're, we're going to ask you about where your PHI, you know, a, a real risk assessment and risk analysis, you know. Mm-hmm. And and we give them that, and they're like, these are way too many things. It, can't you just do this for me? I do not know <laughs> 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 um, a lot of this stuff, you know. And you can give me your policies and procedures, but can you give me documentation showing you're following them? Can you, you know, tell me where all of your equipment lives? I don't even know any of that. So, yeah, you have to participate. Because it's about business decisions, <laughs> you know. But everybody wants it to be like their shopping list. Mm-hmm. You know, go to the grocery store. Did I do I have this? Put it in the cart. No, put it. In, you know, go find it. Put it in the cart. <laughs> yeah, and if we don't have it, just buy it. <laughs> yeah, just you know, in our house we say JFB, but that's a whole nother story. <laughs> <laughs> just buy it. I don't want to talk about it anymore. <laughs> but the uh, the point, though, that when you look at it that way, I mean, like, shopping list or your grocery store list are different in every household. I mean, yours, David, now that the triplets don't live at home anymore, is dramatically different, right? Yeah, your environment yeah, changed. Yeah, we don't even shop anymore. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and, you know, if you got a family with five growing kids, you know, you going to buy milk and bread every time you go to the store. You're just going to get it, right? Yeah, I know. Every time we go, it's like it's snowing. <laughs> yeah. yeah right? Calling for snow. No, the kids are hungry. <laughs> yeah, I got to feed them. I got to feed them all. And, uh, you know, that that's the way that you shop. You don't need that on your list because you know you're going to need it. So you don't even bother putting it on the list. You just do it. But me, you know, or even now at your house, you know, very different. If you go to the store, it's for whatever you need right now. Mm -hmm. And there are some staple items. If you're out, somebody has to remember to get that. But it's a very different to-do list. Yeah. Pick up the beer and ice cream. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) 
the old beer and diaper story. You know that one? <laughs> yeah. Uh, but it, you know, it works different based on the size and complexity of the environment you're in. I mean, if we got if you got milk and bread every time now. <laughs> this is my, oh, I know. Now. I mean, we used to go through a gallon a day. Now we're lucky to go through a gallon in you know a week. <laughs> right. And if, if we got it at our house, you know, we go, we get them a half a gallon at a time. And, uh, and growing up, you know, on the dairy farm <laughs> back in the day, you know, they had things like clabber. You know, that was my father's nickname. You know, all of the guys that in that generation, there were a bunch of the dudes and they all had nicknames. Nanner nose, shortened to just <laughs> nanner, dosey, you know, and my dad was, Clabber, and uh, if if you never heard of clabber, you can look it up. But it it's you take the raw milk and you leave it sitting out at room temperature, and it turns into something. And it was used in baking and stuff back in the day. So, and, and I don't know the chemical makeups. I just know it's thick sour milk, but you know it's not curdled, which is <laughs> what we would have today. You know, I you know back then I could get some raw milk. I might have me some cottage cheese, some yogurt if I had too much. But today, I just get nasty smelling curdled stuff. <laughs> uh, you know, when you grow up on a dairy farm, you learn about milk. June is Dairy Month, people. Drink your milk. Um, <laughs> but. <laughs> At, at any rate, it's the the whole point is, you know, how much milk do you need? What kind of milk do you need? You know, oh well, we got one kid that's coming to visit who's lactose intolerant, and we do not need that happening in the house. <clears throat> no. So, do we get you know almond milk or soy or what that 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 this kid will not? So you adapt accordingly to what's going on in your environment. So there you go. That's the basic comparison. Hippas like grocery shopping. <laughs> <laughs> you do what's reasonable and appropriate. You know, if I'm going to have a whole bunch of people over, my grocery shopping is different. Mm -hmm. You know, and it's different just for that amount of time. You know, then it, it changes because, you know, I might buy extra so I have extra for the party and then I got leftovers so I don't have to shop as often. It's the <laughs> same stuff. I do it for a period of time a certain way and then I need to change to a different way. I have my basic standards but I'm always going to continue to adapt to my environment and any kind of changes whether they be temporary or more permanent like yours. Yeah. So there you go. That's it. You, you know? You monitor what's going on. You open the fridge. You're like, what the hell is this? <laughs> <laughs> the fire went out. Cook everything. <laughs> Quick, cook it all. <laughs> uh, you know, and, and you know, what's in the freezer and you open the door and some big chunk of something falls out and you're like, when did I buy that? You know, yeah. That's, that's the security tool you didn't need, but you paid for. <laughs> <laughs> that's grandma's vegetable soup from two years ago. <laughs> it's still good. <laughs> 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 just thaw that out. <laughs> uh, but I mean, I I felt like it was a really good uh, comparison to how you needed to constantly monitor and handle HIPAA. And so you know those ambiguous parts, uh, you know, it, it is actually helpful because you're allowed to determine what is reasonable and appropriate. Mm -hmm. I okay? like it. So here's what the security rule tells you: you are allowed to do. In your flexibility of approach, it actually says we're giving you flexibility. Oh. Yeah. You know, so it says your covered entities and business associates may use any security measures that allow uh, them to reasonably and appropriately implement the standards and implementation specifications in the security rule. And here okay. are the things that the factors that you're allowed to include and by them saying this, I would suggest that you write down the decisions you make to show that you included these factors. Mm, that's a great idea. I know. Called documentation. <laughs> so the size, complexity, and capabilities, that's what we just talked about, you know. 
I don't know about you, but I don't get the uh, uh, high end. If I can get something pre made, <laughs> yeah. A lot of times, you know, now I have moved up from Hamburger Helper, but that used to be my way, you know, my go to. <laughs> but, you know, my, my friend who's a chef will get like every little leaf is important. And to me, it's like, hey, look, they've pre cut all this stuff. And I can buy it back. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Uh, so yeah, it's it's, uh, it's the complexity, my capability not there. Your technical infrastructure, the hardware and software, the your capabilities that you have in place. What can I put on here? If I don't have any Linux systems, I can't necessarily just all of a sudden throw out some roll out some Linux security without mm-hmm. you know some plan. The cost of the security measures. They did point out if that they come to your office and you've got <laughs> newly decorated high-end furniture and all this kind of stuff, but you couldn't afford security, they will make note of that. Mm-hmm. And the probability and criticality of potential risk to EPHI. So the security rule. Yeah. What does that tell us, though? It I mean, tells us that um, we have to make decisions based on factors not just yeah. finger in the air <laughs> <laughs> or somewhere else where yeah. <laughs> you put it. just grab it out of some <laughs> thing and uh, throw it so uh, I like that yeah. and then uh, the other part that people the required you know the what they find ambiguous is that the security rule has required or addressable mm-hmm. and so many people really struggle with what that means. And the law pretty much lays it out. <laughs> yeah. You know, it says, if it is a required implementation, then it must be implemented the way that it says. All right. So if it's required, it's required. Gotcha. <laughs> Do it this way. <laughs> That's ambiguous. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> And if it is addressable, then you have to... Adopt something. You you can either look at it and say, okay, well, the way that it's defined here, that's not reasonable, appropriate in our environment. But, you know, you know, at the same time, I have to consider how involved it is in, in protecting the EPHI we have. So you're able to say, okay, I'm just going to do it because – it's reasonable and appropriate in my environment to do it exactly the way the addressable standard says. Or if it's not reasonable and appropriate. And I love it that they made it very specific here. This ambiguous saying. <laughs> Document why it would not be reasonable and appropriate to implement the implementation, implementation specification. Document yes. it. It says it right there. Document it. Why you think you shouldn't do it. Why is it not reasonable and appropriate? And what is reasonable and appropriate that can serve the same purpose? Mm-hmm. Pretty straightforward. I think so. So you mean to tell me that required is required and addressable is required? Yes. <gasps> <laughs> no, the only so difference is how what you do, you do and yeah. how you do it. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, there, because how many times have you heard that? Oh, well, it's not required. It's addressable. I don't have to do it. I know. I mean, I'll go into somebody's site that's a wreck and I'll make sure all the required stuff, because the addressable, I can evaluate those quickly and come up with a solution that's an interim solution. Mm-hmm. You know, all right, we have a plan. It's addressable. We've looked at it. Here's the problem. Let's document it. And then, boom, that, you know, but required, you got to do it that way. Those are the ones you can't put off. You got to do it that way. And, uh, you, you know, it's figure out how you're going to get it done. Mm-hmm. And uh, <laughs> you're funny. Required means required and addressable means required. I love it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, another infinite loop, like ambiguous, you know. So, uh, but in the concept that we're talking about it just means you have flexibility so anybody that thinks it's ambiguous doesn't understand the requirement that the law has to be flexible 
mm-hmm. because of the size and complexity of the organizations. And then they do add more flexibility because, you know, they do say that you need to review and modify these measures that you've put in place to continue making sure that it's reasonable and appropriate and update your documentation. Right. Because what's reasonable and appropriate today may not be tomorrow. There you go, brother. And that's, you know, that goes back to our news stories even because, Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we are always seeing new threats and what might not have been a threat yesterday and what might not have been part of a risk analysis yesterday, um, all that changes all the time, which is why you should be doing them at least annually or Mm -hmm. when something in your environment changes. (laughs) Yeah. So it's not telling you specifically what to do, which is what drives people crazy. And then they complain that the government doesn't get to tell me what to do, but it's not telling me what to do, so I can't do it. (laughs) Again, infinite loop. (laughs) Just tell me what to do. (laughs) Don't don't tell me what to do. (laughs) Don't tell me what to do. Yeah. Uh, but okay, so you know this—that's the bottom line. You know, it, it's 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 giving you options, not it's not telling you specifically how to do things. It's telling you this is the outcome you have to have. It's the outcome it defines, not the process. Right. All right. So we got the privacy rule that's telling us what's acceptable when it comes to privacy. But it also says you have professional judgment that's allowed and patient care comes first. But it doesn't say <laughs> that you can just say, screw this, I'm not going to do it. As that is my professional judgment. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the breach rule, the first implementation, did have a lot of ambiguity because it said if there was harm, then you need to <laughs> notify. And when they came out with the omnibus rule that was the final implementation, you have the four-factor assessment. You answer four questions. Can you read your answers to those questions and say that you think it's reasonable there to assume there's not going to be any potential harm to your patients? Right. Yeah. That's proven it. harm was... Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was proven the negative, you know? Yeah. And, uh, we both know how well that goes because we're always like, I didn't do it. Hmm. Prove you didn't do it. How uh, can I, I prove I, I did? Okay. Uh, okay. See, my room is still dirty. I didn't do it. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. My proof. <laughs> That's, it. That's it. I didn't do HIPAA. It's pretty easy to see. That. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't there, but there are no cameras to prove it. No. Yeah. Okay. I'm not saying I'm Superman. I'm just saying we've never been in the same place twice. Yeah, it's like this song from years back. It wasn't me. (laughs) Oh, God, yes. That's funny. (laughs) Uh, I do love that one. Okay, so we've covered it. It, It's it's all about being reasonable and appropriate. It is not. It's requiring you to make decisions. And if it were going to be able to tell you exactly what to do, that would be like me telling you, Every time you go to the store, David, because you did go to the store once and you bought milk and bread every time, now you should buy milk and bread every time for the rest of your life. Yes, and you must buy a certain brand of milk and bread and size yeah. of milk and bread and complexity yeah. of milk and bread. Yeah, and there's no changing it because right. it's in the law. Right. We can't put that in the law, you know? Mm-hmm. So, yeah, yeah. You don't want them to. I mean, imagine... Just on the technology side, if you had to put the same equipment in your one doctor practice as a hospital system, you couldn't do it. Uh-uh. You know, no. well, what, what do you mean I got to spend $40,000 on a router? <laughs> yeah. Well, although there are some IT people that that's what they come in and tell them. <laughs> You're right. You're absolutely right. So, yeah. Somewhere between $40,000 and what you can pick up at Walmart is probably your answer. <laughs> <laughs> but but neither yeah neither neither end of that spectrum is probably right. Neither is reasonable and appropriate in your environment. Like right, but just document it. Yeah, document how, your. How did you come up with that? Yeah. yeah, that way people like Donna can look at you and say, "Explain to me why you thought this." Yeah, I mean, at least if you're documenting your decisions, what they're able to say is, "We think you're wrong." Yeah, you know. But if you don't document decisions, then it's like, well, you didn't even think about it at all. Yeah. I would much rather have, you know, Carden question me than the OCR. <laughs> and trust me, Carla's very good about questioning. I know. 
she'll wear <laughs> you right on out. I'm like, yeah. Stop, Carla. Stop the madness. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, Krista and Elizabeth ain't no better. Let me tell you. They all ask me questions all day, every day. I feel y'all's pain. <laughs> so, uh, But anyway, mm. there we have it. That, that's right. our story for the day, and I'm sticking to it. All right. Well, that was such an ambiguous podcast we had here. Utterly exciting. Ha, as the cow would say. Uh-huh. <laughs> All right, that is our show for today, folks. Make sure that you listen next week if we haven't turned you off enough today. <laughs> Be sure to rate us on our podcast and out. Help spread the word. Uh, donate. We'll send you a sticker and a cookie. And uh, You're in charge of that, David. So anybody that doesn't get a sticker and a cookie, you know who didn't do it. <laughs> remember to send all your questions to Donna. She has nothing better to do. And also remember the HIP is not about compliance. It's about patient care. You've been listening to the Help Me With HIPAA podcast, hosted by Donna Grendel and David Sims. The show created to help you with HIPAA. For more information or to ask us a question, visit our website at helpmewithhipaa.com. Neither Donna Grendel or David Sims are attorneys, and they do not offer binding legal advice concerning regulatory compliance. The information in this podcast should not be relied upon or construed as legal advice in any way. Consult your attorney for legal advice concerning compliance with HIPAA regulations.